I'm in the world. I'm in the places where people need to hear God. You know, regardless of where I go, I carry that conversation. The places that I go, like, the people at church wouldn't go. I think when God touches you and anoints you to, to have a word, I don't think that... I mean, your shell may play a part in his plan. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's to be criticizing. I'm sitting here as a spectator and I'm watching y'all, observing y'all as y'all watch him speak and y'all so stoic and... And you got a pastor that's on fire, that's clearly on fire, but because of the politics of the church, you can't even celebrate it. Like, but that's dirty. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? It's not real. And, you know, street people, we see that. We, we have a saying, I tell them, real recognize real. He's just a real guy. And he really cares. And he's frustrated with um, being held back by the, uh, what's the bureaucracy of the church. What's up, this is your boy Q. I'm gonna just press the chat. So first of all, the most insane thing is go for my Q. Do it. I got the idea to do my Q Dub Life uh, as a living testimony in progress. Usually, you know, when people share the testimony, it's, you know, ideally two or three minutes, which is unrealistic to me. As a father, as a brother, as an uncle, as a human being, as a black man in America, I felt that it was necessary to document my walk, uh, if you will, and my queued up life serves as that living testimony that is also in progress. Yeah.